Virtue, what is it? Well, from Latin vir, men, human, or something pertaining to its humaneness. We fall out and we reach virtue at various stages of our time. It is nothing permanent. Yet, how should we think about virtue? This is something that we process through our reason and intellection and feeling in order to arrive at the effect that it brings to the society as a whole, as a fabric. And when we find them reasonable, beautiful and intelligent, we attempt to follow them and incorporate them into our veins, into our bloodstreams, into our minds. Now, this short lecture will be about the virtues of Rome and how we may arrive at them by understanding, by trying to pursue the proper means in order to see what good may be in them. I wrote this dialogue for this very purpose. So, for Omil, I was guided and protected by many ancient thoughts that gave me relief. They saved me from paralyzing states of lackluster and significance. I am indebted to books written by masters of their time. Those silver insights that seem timeless insofar as humanity can still relate to them, that are not consigned to oblivion. For a book is a representative face of the author, yet an author cannot be reduced to his book. Sometimes a book surpasses the author and is more magnificent than the author himself. Sometimes it is the other way around. Then we are dealing either with an outstanding man, or woman, or with a mediocre book at best. Peripsil. When we learn to walk the paths of the masters and mistresses, you take your own guideposts along the way. After you have matured and harnessed the earlier path, you begin to pioneer in your own way. You begin to pave the way for your errors, enriched by your mental calligraphy, thought syntax, cognitive style, feeling, and arsenal of ideas to further inspire them. You build on your ideas and hopefully that of others to contribute to this continuous blossoming. Fuomil. This is my will, my holy diamond. It is my will to inspire others to do great and magnificent things. It is to convey supernatural experiences in an aesthetic form for the knowledgeable and acceptable to the hesitant. It is also to distract the ignorant and rude, so that they do not tear the blood from my veins as some boards, to protect it from spitters, contestants and contemptuous, who would not understand or endure a day of my past heroic attitudes. Now that the dust has settled and the detractors have retreated, I will continue to write as best as I may. Allow me then to expose Via Romana, whose acquaintance has led me to remain defiant and has saved me a great deal of trouble. In this conversation I would like to ask you, O Peripsol, what you think about the particular values and virtues that the Romans held in such high esteem. In my delirium of madness I was first saved by the meditations of the stoic beast of God, Aurelian Terion, Marcus Aurelius. His powerful house of Ausel, Sabine, was greatly honored by one of the greatest emperors of Rome. I remember the great boon, these memories and reflections granted to my weary, still living soul. They ordered my mind possessed by madness and calmed my insanity. While well, I, I turned my spiritual inner eye to the mighty stars in thanksgiving for this walk. I must admit without boast of va or vain pride that years later the Saturnian emperor visited me in spirit. Together we stood there, with laurel wreaths on our heads, and a toga of brilliant gold and silver light wrapped around my body. I was standing there in a room at night. I was accompanied by his dignified noble soul, which dominated my mind and body with its eyes in the highest splendor. The same soulful eyes that used to oversee armies, carry out reforms, and govern the far-reaching provinces of Rome. Soulful eyes that appreciated philosophy and his beloved people that now visit a dedicated humble son of earth. A star with a fatherly look and suiting compassion, a wonder of temperance and perfectly self-controlled character, autocraton truly. Moreover, of unshakable nature, marked by virtue and excellence, something to follow, something to be inspired by. Peripsol, to do justice, one of his loyal soldiers visited you the very next day. Fuomo, 
as he so welcomed my body and spirit with his himself. We ate a hearty meal, tough, war steeled, even rough in a soldierly way. If the Emperor's spirit visited me, it was to do justice to one of his soldiers. I found him as shrewd as a wild boar, inasmuch as my mind and feeling interpreted correctly. Continuing my Caesarized stories, I find myself compelled to speak of the virtues to which Roman citizens aspired. Peripsal, please explain how you understand the Via Romana, because you seem to be convinced of the ideals that are presented here. Formal. Let me first state the virtue of auctoritas, which is formed of mercurial quicksilver into a light feather of steel that adorns the laurels. It is the crown of maturity in which the experience of one's life finds a strong resolution. It matures with time, insight, wisdom, and discernment, reason, and finds itself in a paternal and maternal way of looking at the society. It is directed outward to the invisible worlds of the gods, it is the inner power of conviction based on trust in past years, and the inner force of conviction that what is relied upon, whether attitudes, beliefs, or methods of interacting with the world, has proven to be sharp and strong. Things that endure despite all assaults by idiotes, that is, unwise, or other forces of ignorance, darkness, and vileness. Against them, they are strong as fortresses and open their gates only to those from whom one has learned in the discernment of the wisdom and knowledge, and to whom one has imparted their knowledge, according to will, necessity, and need. For a sage, it is the strength of his inner truth. For a senator, it is a social position gained through merit and service. For a scholar, it is the fruit of his works and his reputation. For only the disgraced lose the sense of authority and fall. But charismatic authority is the true auctoritas, the commanding power that rises from the depths of one's genius, that flames of motives, deeds and actions, that can be humbled but never extinguished, unless silenced when necessary or weakened by age and illness. Peripsal. A curious exposition, but of what use is this true or perceived auctoritas of which you speak without other accompanying virtues? Obviously, it cannot do without other virtues, otherwise it will collapse and soon fall apart like a temple without strong colonnades. Formal. I see, Peripso, that sometimes your voice speaks the truth of providence. Sometimes it is curious, sometimes it is somewhat malicious, sometimes it is helpful. I know my mind speaks many voices, but I rely on my senses to detect and form of mischief in the metamorphosis and transmigration as we continue this conversation. When my solar angel leaves me for a while, I will talk with you, Boer, as I have detected your presence, about the ethos and moral philosophy of antiquity, and with all due respect to the gods and spirits of Greece and others, let us talk. Boer. For a mortal much younger than our ancient daimonic races, a familiar infernal knight has been sent to converse with an old friend who surpasses the plans. Formal. So great your crowns and princes and other relatives, I will not trouble you further. Ombo. The knight. Lord, let us talk to each other. Formal. So, Comitas was the virtue that led people to take with humor anything that was instructive, benevolent, or of deadly wit and was received with respect by both sides, or that led to swords being drawn when the wrong words were spoken in the wrong quarters, and between parties that tended to anger those present. The seventh book of the Saturnalia of Macrobius repeats what Eustatius tells us about bad treatment. Besides vituperations, gripsogos, and calumnies, diabola, there are two Greek terms, loidoria and scomma, perhaps directly insulting accusations, whereas I would almost say that scomma is an oblique kind of teasing, since it is often obscured by a deceptive or urbane facade, so that it sounds like one thing, although it is heard as another. Remember then the friendly way in which it is better to joke with courtesy and frankness, which in fact leads to clementia, mercy, inner peace and harmonious balance. It is the forgiveness that finds no fault, the Amor Vincit Omnia of the great Virgil. It is mercy and judgment in dealing with an enemy only after we have triumphed over him, so that he may not harm any more. And in personal action, when we have to deal with troublesome people, 
closely connected with silence and looking the other way at all sorts of little transgressions that lowly people often smuggle into their everyday life in the belief that they will cunningly escape the attention of more experienced foxes. Then we must not fall, fail to mention dignitas, a sense of self-worth based not on faulty or wrong undertakings, but on genuine divine pride that should not be confused with bombastic gushing. Is the lion proud? Their pride cannot be heard because it is based on the fundamentals of their being. In superiority they shine, in exile they nourish it in secret. The ability to withdraw pride in humility means that there is no false pride. However, dignity or the sum of one's accomplishments and a code followed by a person growing into his backbone are not the same as honor. The latter can be destroyed and ruined by a single scoundrel. We can be slandered at the hands of a group of such bastards and lose all our good reputation. Dignity emanates from honor, but if the latter has no name, dignity remains singular. Dignity can be slandered and ridiculed, but when it is upright and true, it shines. When it is bent by humiliating circumstances, it returns to itself when the situation is over, as if there were no loss to bear, like a blade of grass. It is closely related to firmitas, determination, strength of will and an indomitable spirit, the ability to stay the curse to the end, to follow the given waypoint, that is, the goal with motivation. Firmitas is also a way of dealing with enemies, because if the cause is good and invites attacks in siege and violence, standing still and biting through obstacles is a commendable endeavor. It is not to be confused with stubbornness, which persists in sick, unwise attitudes. What is stubborn can be changed, but when we are dealing with stubborn baseness that attacks our steadfastness, then it is time to draw swords and get rid of such idiots or change company, at best, if we may. Ombo. Do I need to say that you are a stubborn in your undertakings? You feel enlightened by your talks, do you know the beginnings and the ends? Although it is a beautiful enlightening thing that fits perfectly in today's times, there must be a wide audience for whom you write. Formal. Despite your wise mockery, you living spirit, I perform a Faustian work that pretends to be redemptive in a Promethean way. I am aware that I am a little man who studies his books, who guards the lost treasures of his intellect, who I am no more, no more. The gardens I tend are mine alone, but let others walk in them if they wish. Speaking of gardens, frugalitas, thrift, frugality, simplicity, without being excessively poor, which uses one's possessions according to their usefulness and necessity for life. For according to wealth, one applies one's means. If one is rich, one may be generous, like a philanthropist who seeks nothing but to contribute to the good, or one spends too much like some who have acquired a new fortune that is a torn in the side of the poor, because one spends in one place what the other bleeds in the sweat of his brow and the life of his family in another. Yet if we are gifted with modest means, we also carry ourselves in a balanced way with proper means to proper needs. Then gravitas, a Saturnian quality of responsibility and precision, is a serious commitment that does not shirk duties, a dedicated attitude that works for good goals and efforts. Night, Ombo. And how will you judge whether a goal or a fault is good when hell is paved with such good intentions and deeds? Formal. Let us rely here on the letters of Jamblich that even the greatest natures that turn to evil become corrupt and terrible, and even the greatest undertakings can end in disaster if the roots are not right. Ombo. When I look at this world, it seems that small people who are convinced that their undertakings are monoliths of human achievements and are just building a house of cards that is bound to fall any time. Formal. The weakness of this house of cards becomes even more apparent when it collapses, because when bloated enterprises, false plans are hidden and grow, time eventually destroys them. People of character see and observe. When they see that they cannot change anything, they bet on the rapid change of times in the future. Even if they say goodbye to life for a long while, maybe what they create will flourish later or perish with time like the times they try to avoid, avert. 
but this is a matter of fate and chance. This virtue, honestas, is a picture of sincerity towards the world, without guile or hidden motives that one does not need to hide, because the things that he cares for and that make up his life speak for each other and are united in unison, homogeneous, transparent nature, strong and open to the gods, in reverence. Veritas, why should they put up with any vile machination? In this humanitas, human humaneness, sublimity of thought and action, education and culture as in the Hellenic paideia, science also contributes to the open dealings with people and the gods. Because if you meet a vile person, be the judge, it is better to hide things and reveal them only to people who are guided by similar things. But we do not counteract our nature, we only reveal what is necessary. Better to be silent than to lie. Better to be reserved and strict than to display unworthy behavior in the midst of different societies and imitate their behavior. Such is a masquerade risks that we lose our own nature and replace it with that of a bad society. And now to the industria, of which the noble bee is an example. Macrobius says that we should imitate the bees that wander about, tasting the flowers, arranging what they have gathered, distributing it among the cells of the honeycomb, and by the peculiar quality of their own spirit transforming the different kinds of nectar into a single flavor. This is the meaning of industria, which feeds perfectly with human societies. Pietas is a deep sense of respect for order and tradition, both political, polis, and religious. It means sacrificing oneself for the good and promoting what is valuable. Here Servius Suplicius has recorded that religious scrapple, religio, is the term that refers to something that keeps a certain sacredness away from us and apart, as if the term is derived from leave behind, relinquere, just as reverence, carimonia, is derived from having luck, carere, relegare, to verify, tell, or religare, to bind, restrain. All these related terms serve to elevate things considered sacred along with tradition and to place the noblest virtues in proper relation to them. For when they become commonplace, all too tamed, they lose all their value. Thus this symbol becomes an object from which it can easily be torn and destroyed. Thus it was once said that he who subjugates the symbols of others is their master. So defending your own symbols is a matter of preserving an identity or sacralizing what you hold sacred in order to respect it and protect it from theft or damage. So when an enemy tries to take advantage of you, you smash his symbols. When he advances, you seek protection under your own. In tolerance, we respect each other's symbols, which are as diverse as cultures and civilizations. But when one goes against the other, the symbols, including language, a once sacred symbol system becomes a tool of warfare. Ombo. Paganus, the people of the cross, Christians, have gone against you, so you detest them. Yet they too defend an attack with symbols they deem valuable. For Omel, that is true. But in their intolerance they turned against my symbols, and so I mixed their symbols with mud, and depicted them as pigs digging in their own mud. Was not it the same thing that the great Giordano Bruno did, with more discourse, more caution, more finesse, but with more same like passion? This is a case of salubritas, of wholeness that should not be broken, a certain healthy impulse of mind, body and souls that protects against injustice, that shocks the deepest of our atoms. Prudentia is a lady of reason, foresight and wisdom. She gives the rhythm and the dictum to follow. A simple person can be wise but unsophisticated. A person of generous character can be sophisticated yet foolish. But do not dare to test the wisdom of a patient person or he will become your bloodiest of enemies. Ombo. How can you combine these virtues you speak of? I have observed you and you are completely flawed. Formal. I'm not striving for perfection or to be made a stone of virtue, but striving and acting in unison. If they are honest and understood with reason, that is how you perfect nature or make it whole. In other words, holy, sanctified, like these symbols we have been talking about. Now, Benjamin Franklin had a method of correcting himself and evaluating his progress through life, as a free and responsible man should do, in order to change what was less than right and to promote the good in his character. Such introspection with memories is indeed a great tool. 
I see that Peripsol has arrived, Ombo. I will not banish you, but politely ask you to return to your own realm. Ombo, farewell. Peripsil. I overheard your conversation from afar. The Buddhists realized that. One is chained to the golden chain of virtue, the other to the iron chain of vice. And yet it is better to be freed from a golden chain than to fall under the rule of the cold iron fetters of a slave. Fuomil. Rightly, better to die nobly and with dignity. May Angerona Volupia, that goddess of restraint and persuasion and pleasure, reward the silence of what has been endured, than to give in to vice, which is a vile poison not only destroying our minds and hearts, but often transmitting the disease to others. It should be controlled and fought fiercely within. Thank you.